So you want to get a CEO to answer the phone? Tell them there's an activist investor calling. So today we're going to talk about activist investors, uh, what they are, what they do, why some of what they do is very necessary, and the impact it can often have on companies and stock prices. Uh, but first, if you like these kinds of things and you want to learn more about investing in the stock market and the general world of investing, please hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. And give us a like on the video. So today we're talking about activist investors. You might hear names like Bill Ackman of Pershing Square or Carl Icahn of Icon Enterprises. Uh, these are some well-known activist investors, uh, but there's many more out there than those two, and there's many that are active in the markets at all times. So let's set a baseline. Uh, there's companies that are trading publicly and privately all over the world, and they're not always run to the best of their abilities. Now, this doesn't mean that they're run poorly per se. It just may be that they're not being run as well as their peers. There could be great opportunities within them to do more. And sometimes it requires an activist investor to take action and pursue these better results or better activities for these companies. Uh, let's break this down pretty simply here. An acti activist investor is typically a large group of investors, a hedge fund, a private equity firm, whatever the case may be, who goes out and acquires shares of the company, usually at scale, not necessarily even that much, but enough to have an impact or enough to have a say. And what they try to do is leverage those shares into a voice on the board. Now they might require a proxy battle where they're gonna go out and try to get shareholders to vote their way to help them put people on the board of directors. And once they have those folks on the board of directors, they can affect company change, they can potentially change up that CEO, or they can drive towards the goal that they think they should have as a firm. Now you might say to yourself, this could be very disruptive to a company to have to deal with these outside activist investors, but the reality is sometimes certain boards and certain executives just don't take the action needed to get that impact or get that change, to get that share price where it's desired. And so oftentimes you see these on Bloomberg or CNBC, these big name investors coming on, pitching their case, trying to get regular standard voters like us to go and vote our shares the way they want versus the way the company or board recommends today. So if you ever see this in a company that you own, I would encourage you to do a few things understand how that company is doing to its, compared to its peers, understand what that activist investor may be looking to have you change or what their impact is or what they think should be changed within that company, and then make the decision if you're on board with what they're trying to do or not. One of the big criticisms of activist investing in general is this idea that they're only in it for the short, short term. They're looking to make a very quick change, put some people on the board, and get that stock price up and then jump ship. While this has been historically true to some degree, there's also countless cases where these folks jump on board and stay on for the long term and really ride that price all the way up. Uh, so that's really it for today. We're going to keep it quick and simple. When an activist investor comes on board, they're looking to change something significant at the company, whether it's to improve poor performance or increase performance from good to great. They typically look to acquire a large amount of shares, get the voting class of shares to agree with them, and then vote some of their own people on the board of directors. Once they're on the board of directors, they'll be able to have some say, potentially replace the CEO, and drive towards what the activist investor believes is the right way to go. As a final note of why this is particularly important, more than ever in 2020, is as more of these passive funds come to surface, these you know, low-cost index funds or ETFs, the concern is a lot of the folks who own the shares and the voting rights in these companies <coughs> may not be voting. It's so passive that it may not have an active role in deciding who's on the board or if they're doing the right things. So this is why more than ever, the need for an activist investor could be seen as being very positive because they're taking on the role of what traditionally would have been large investors, where now it's a large amount of passive investors. So of course, you're open to your own opinion of what you think the role of an activist investor might be from good or bad. And I'm sure we can all agree that it's part of the market. They're oftentimes are needed and helps to drive change within companies. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening.